order. It's good to see all of you this evening. Um, we are meeting on a Tuesday evening instead of our regular Monday meeting because yesterday we celebrated our first Juneteenth holiday. So our city employees did have the day off and uh, very proud to have been able to offer that to them. Um, our meeting is called to order. I have asked our finance director, Larry Lawrence, if he wouldn't mind offering an invocation for us. And then following that, I'll call on Councilman Reynolds to lead us in the pledge to our flag. So Larry. Let us pray. Father, we just enter your gates with thanksgiving this evening. Father, thank you for blessing the city with the finances that they need to, to uh, benefit the citizens of this city. Father, thank you for the council that's serving, sacrificing their time to lead, guide, and direct the city. Father, Father, we just just continue to bless this city. Father, thank you for your grace, love, and mercy, Lord God. Uh, be a man to our feet, my to our path, Father, and lead, guide, and direct us as we make important decisions tonight, Father. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Josh. <coughs> All right, uh, we do have um, the agenda to approve. Um, you've got a copy of that that Jessica's passed out. Mayor, uh, I think the original agenda had as an item number five, the resolution accepting the Georgia Power Make Ready Program Agreement, as well as uh, number six was the amended lease agreement with Norfolk Southern. Mm -hmm. uh, those of, uh, uh, on the amended agenda, they don't seem to appear here. But I'd ask that those be postponed. There's still some work we need to do with the lease agreement with Norfolk Southern okay. so that we can make them kind of marry with the Georgia Power Agreement. Okay, all right. So uh, so we have removed those items from the new agenda, and Jessica's passed those out to us uh, just a few minutes ago, so you have a copy of that. So I will take a motion to approve the agenda as presented, uh, the new agenda. So moved. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Um, Jessica, did you want to um, address the minutes or everything's there that we need to move forward with the minutes? Um, if you want to provide, you know, you don't have the time to flip back over, but I'll provide it. Okay. All right. There was a mistake in um, sending the minutes out. The entire packet of the minutes had not, had didn't make the email somehow or another. It was just a glitch somehow, but you now have those, um, those minutes. So if you'd like to go ahead and approve those this evening, we can, or if you'd rather table those until our next minute uh, meeting, we can, we can do either one. I move the approval. Okay, all right, thank you, Jack. Is there a second? A second. All right, thank you, Lester. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you, gentlemen. All right, we are at the public comment section, uh, and we do have two of our residents who would like to address us, uh, Idell Wilcox and Joanne Zorn. Um, so, ladies, if you'd like to come to the podium here, if you'd like to come together individually, I'll leave that up to you. And uh, if you will, just state your name again and your address, just so that we can have that on record, and, uh, and then... Feel free to address the council. Good afternoon. My name is Adele Wilcox. Um, I live at 153 Tipton El Dorado Road, Tipton, Georgia, zip 31794. My concern is sidewalks where I live. At. The road is real dangerous. And it really didn't bother me until one morning I was out walking and I saw the children running and I was wondering what they were running at. I thought maybe the dog was after, but when I turned around and looked, they were trying to get out the road of the traffic. We have three churches over there, and we have a school. And we really need some sidewalk. And I'm going to let uh, Joanne speak. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Joanne Zorn. I live at 149 Tipton Elevator Road. And I uh, also just want to comment also what Ms. Wilcox uh, had said about the traffic is very, you know, extremely busy, busy. And people are traveling there at a very high speed, of, you know, highway of speed. You know, I understand that, you know, the police department is probably doing the best they can with what 
they have to work with. It's called trying to slow them down some because I have seen some do the traffic stop over there. Mm -hmm. But I know they can't be there 24 hours. And like she said, you really need those sidewalks because people are constantly walking to the store or walking the kids to school or the kids just walking to the store. You know, it's dangerous for them. Instead of them going, you know, on that, on Tilton Elevator Road, mm -hmm. they're running through people's yards and everything, you know. And some people do not want, you know, want that kind of traffic through their yard. And the sidewalk will help out. Also, my other concern is uh, Evergreen Drive. I live at the corner of Evergreen Drive and Tilton Elevator Road. Well, Evergreen Drive has become the same thing. Um, for some reason, it's not a lengthy street. I mean, it's a very short street. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, the cars seem to find the need to go from zero to 60 on that short street. And if we can get maybe some speed bumpers, a couple speed bumpers on that, kind of slow them down a little bit, you know. Uh, they might get angry, you know, because you know, we presented it <laughs> and, and got this taken care of if you all did it, you know. But I also look at the fact that there are kids in the area too. I mean, kids are still riding bicycles or walking from one house to the next. You know, you never know. And also, there are go karts. They're riding the go karts. Mm -hmm. You never know. They speeding down that street. You never know when a child might come out one of the side streets. And I have seen some of them blind, and a kid almost got eaten. And it really bothered me. I was so nervous and upset, mm -hmm. I mean, about the fact that that, that that child almost, I said, something needs to be done. I mean, because they really need to think of safety, you know, mm -hmm. instead of trying to speed like that. And so that's what we are here for, mm -hmm. hoping that maybe, you know, you all will help us out with this issue. Thank you. Okay. Because you know, we've been over there like four years. Right. You know, we're not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, Jessica, can, is there any way to look into maybe like that Safe Routes to School program or um, is there any kind of grant program we could look into to help with something like that? Yeah, I don't think so, Mayor. I, I talked to Ms. Wilcox. Uh, we uh -huh. talked on the telephone. Yes, yes ma'am. Um, thank you. It's good to see you. Uh, Councilman Cromer and I did mm -hmm. discuss it and actually Jeff and I uh, discussed it as well and we think it's going to be a, a really good project uh, I believe he's measured it and this is something that will fit uh, exactly what t is, okay. is designed to do so okay. uh, we're, we're probably going to design to see because I don't think there'll be any right-of-way acquisition there's no okay. storm water that we have good. to contend with so I I really think this would be great for the uh, children number mm -hmm. one and for the neighborhood to connect uh, Charles Spencer School, yeah. uh, all the way down to Evergreen. So I think it would be a good project, and uh, we'll we'll keep you posted on and we get some estimates and how we're going to go about doing that. So okay. we'll keep you posted on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, do, what's the, do you know the speed limit on, on that street? <clears throat> Ladies, do y'all have to know what the speed limit is on? on it's probably 35. 35. And then once you get past uh, the city limit on the end down by the church, I think it's uh, it changed again. But in that area, what the school is here, it's 35. 35, okay. Well, I just, I know the chief's back there, and maybe we could, you know, you well, stop it. I, I say, but they, the cars don't, uh, they don't get to the speed limit. We've seen them pass the bus, you know, mm -hmm. that's that. Yeah. You, if, if the... Chief will, will stop a few of them and give a few tickets. Sometimes that gets their attention when they know what, what's happening. And, and the other issue is, they're riding go karts. Is that what you're telling me? They're, they're golf or something? No. Oh, that was in the neighborhood hmm? to the left. Yeah, on the Evergreen. Yeah. So it, yeah, things so that shouldn't that aren't street aren't supposed to be on the streets. Uh, I wouldn't say it shouldn't be on the streets. It's, it's more so uh, just the speeding of it because it's kind of like golf carts. Mm -hmm. and, um, I mean, golf carts one thing. These go karts that I you know, or, or these kind of things which are not. Did I say go karts? Yeah, oh, golf, 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 golf. It's actually golf cart. Yes, okay. she meant golf cart. She meant golf cart. Okay. Yes. Not, there's no golf cart. Yeah. Well, we we have issues with those and, and underage drivers that don't know what they're doing. So I don't know if y'all have the underage drivers in that no, area it's, or it's not. A um, golf cart city. In, in, uh, with, yeah. Nah, I, I, okay. Yeah. Golf carts are old for them now. With, like with that, kids don't want to go. They want the golf cart. 
Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> would, would that be something that, um, Chief, I don't know, we have our digital clocker we put out, speeding clocker. It's not, yeah, it's it don't call it. Out there, I mean, you know, sometimes it maybe just deter them, get them a little nervous. Make like, them think like, about it or something. Mm -hmm. little, little yeah. we'll, we'll definitely come up with some ideas. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies, for bringing that to our attention. And, and, uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Moving along, uh, we have our consent agenda. And um, as you know, tonight being our regular council meeting, uh, these are all items that we've discussed at our workshop. We can take these items all together as one motion, or we can separate them and take them individually. I'll leave that up to you, gentlemen, to, uh, to decide how you want to move forward. I'm fine with all together. Okay, make a motion to accept. Okay, so we have a motion to accept and a second uh, on all five of those consent agenda items. Any further discussion? All those in favor, in favor please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> all right. Under new business, we have the award of the bid for the FY 2022 LMIG, which is the Local Maintenance Improvement Grant Waterline Replacement. So, Pete, Jeff, do you want to present uh, the information on that? Yes, ma'am, I, I will. And I talked a little bit about this at the work session, if you remember these. Uh, this project is for the water lines to go in before some of the streets that are on the paving list uh, this time around. So we put this out to bid. Uh, we did receive three uh, bidders to, to submit prices. Uh, the, the top two, uh, w one we uh, we have done work with. The other is is unfamiliar to us as far as work. Uh, but I wanted the engineers to go a step further. They called both companies, Popco and Scarborough, and asked them their start date. Uh, we did receive that in writing, and Popco's start date would be three to four weeks, and Scarborough could not start until September 1st. So this is a fast-track project. As you know, the paving is ready to go. Jeff is ready to bid this out with prices and escalation and how fast we have to do the project. I recommend that we award the, the, uh, the job to Popco Incorporated for $589,681. Dollars, so we could uh, complete the work as required. The extra money, again, I mentioned we are over budget. The extra money will come out of the water splash money for the city of Tipton. Okay, and uh, and those, those bids and that information are in your packet. The train go by. We need to get moving quickly on this. Yeah. So, uh, I move to accept the recommendation. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to uh, allow the bid to be awarded to Popco. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Pete, let me, on this next, you know, we, I forget whether we've approved the, the next round next, for next year's streets, but can we go ahead maybe once we finalize those and let's do this as far as the water, go ahead, you know, we can bid that earlier, which enables us to then yeah, I, these streets earlier too. I agree. I think it'd be a good idea in the prices that we're seeing. It's it's unfamiliar territory. So uh, Jeff will launch the uh, RFP for the paving. So we'll have updated pricing for water lines and we'll have updated pricing for for paving. So yes, we could go into the next phase. We could start bringing you the streets and we could get that list done and you know get the work on it right away. We need uh, I still have some I need to Right, that list is coming. So I know yours, yours is probably <laughs> nine, ten streets already. So, yeah. um, <laughs> so got to share the love now, MJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's we, we yeah. it's not all, as much as I love District Four. It's not all District we'll, Four. We'll see because I I'll probably your, all of your chairs are going to go backwards. Hopefully, when we see these new prices, oh, but I can maybe only not. Imagine. And then Councilman Cromer, we've we've had some good discussions. His philosophy is a little different. And I. I tend to like it about the main route. So yes, we have some work to do. I'll ask Jeff to bring that forward. Okay. And uh, we'll get started on that right away. So at least we could b get bidding out because uh, you know the w more we delay, uh, who's no who knows what's going to happen. So I think it's a it's prudent on our, our part to get it started. Okay. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Okay. Uh, next item on our agenda are resolutions. Uh, the first one is a very important one: the one adopting the FY 2023 budget. Uh, we've had our public hearings. We've discussed it in our uh, workshop several times. We have talked about uh, talked about the budget at our um, planning retreat. Anything else we need to ask or discuss concerning that FY 2023 budget? 
All right. I'll take a motion concerning the budget. I'll make a motion. To accept? To accept. Okay. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to accept the uh, 2023 budget as presented. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The next one is a resolution updating the Georgia Fund One investment account. Um, and we've talked about that as well. Larry, do you have any information you want to share? Yes, uh, this resolution is just uh, on the Georgia Fund One taking the David Chancey off and adding Lisa first. Okay. So it's just housekeeping kind of stuff. All right. All right. So I'll take a motion concerning that uh, update. Make a motion. Thank you, MJ. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Perfect. We are moving right along. The next item on our agenda is our board report. And uh, we have one vacancy on the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, we do have an uh, applicant in Jenny Harper. Is Jen Jenny's been on that board, right? Mm -hmm. She's wanting to renew. Okay, I want to make sure I had that correct. It's the only one I've sent, um, ones I have over to the others that have vacancies that I heard that they did discuss. And, and approved yeah. her being reappointed. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, Jenny Harper is being presented uh, as renewing her term. She's already serving uh, on the Historic Preservation Commission. And per our policy, the board has approved her being reappointed. Uh, the Historic Preservation Commission board is, is who I'm talking about. So um, I'll take a motion concerning Ms. Harper, if you'd like to go ahead and do that this evening. So moved. Okay. Thank second. you. Second. Motion second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And you can see we have uh, current vacancies, one on planning and zoning, one on the Planning and Zoning Board of Appeals, and one on the Urban Redevelopment Board. So as you were talking to your <laughs> constituents and, and folks in your neighborhoods, um, if there are any uh, candidates that you think would be appropriate for these boards, please let them know that they can contact Jessica, or Jessica's good to contact them if you'll just share that information with her and she can reach out and we can get these other seats filled. All right, City Manager Report, Pete. Okay, thank you, Mayor. First, I want to report uh, that Main Lane, that project is just about done uh, and is complete. We're waiting on pavement for it. Uh, it looks great, it is working, and it's gonna be a great project. So, and, and also thanks to the DDA for partnering with that, um, that project and cost. So uh, the, the Nixons are, are, are pleased with it, so it's gonna be a, another you know, well, well deserved improvement downtown. So that that is that is just about done, and I will let you know when it's done, so you could ride the one way alley uh, from from side to side, so you can see okay. it. You know, we talked about a lot of these grants that are shuffling through from federal to state, and they're so fast moving, they're shovel ready, they're very confusing, uh, and it gets a lot of people's attention. Uh, and it, it, the money is going to go away eventually, but. There are a lot of topics that get some attention, uh, such as transportation and housing. And we're working with a couple offices trying to decipher, would this be applicable? Are we ready for this? How, how, do, we, you know, how do we apply for it? Who can we partner with? And Commerce Way is a prime example. And we did just about, we got that grant done and we went from 360,000 to over a million dollars. And hopefully we'll get that, that grant. Uh, so we will uh, hopefully see, uh, see if we re are recipients very soon. But I want to let you know, uh, Crystal and I are entertaining uh, like a CHIP grant, but this is coming out of the federal government for housing and rehabilitation. So she and I are going to be working with uh, Senator Ossoff's office uh, to see if this application we could push forward. And I'll bring this to you as soon as we know. The second is a transportation grant that Jeff and I met uh, with uh, an engineer here about doing a sidewalk and curb and gutter project over by ABAC. So we're, it's so fast moving. Uh, I, really, we turn around and the application is due uh, June 30th. So as these come, we're, we're going to be filtering that. But I want you to know that our staff, we're, we're looking at all these outlets to see how we could attach ourselves to it and what kind of monies we could get without too many requirements uh, from the local government. So I wanted to let you know, and I will share those with you as soon as they, um, they, they come out or the application is ready to go. And then lastly, um, you know, the budget was very aggressive this year and I wanted to thank you. You, you haven't said much about it, but uh, the budget, uh, we can't do what we do without your support. 
So number one, thank you for your support for doing that. And uh, the departments do one heck of a job in managing that for the city of Tifton. But overall, it is a great budget, especially with no millage increase and what we're able to do with the funds. So thank you for doing that. But most specifically, I want to thank you on behalf of the city employees for the cost of living, the one-time pay uh, on, in addition to the budget. And I think that's important that I acknowledge that on their behalf. There's some confusion. Public safety is going to get their funds, but we, we you, you allowed us to add to it because it was only $1,000 from public safety, and that came from the state. We're adding uh, almost $700 to that for police and fire, so it is a benefit for all city employees, and I think it's it, it goes without saying. So, you know, about your support and and thank you for uh, you know, just being the, the backers of, of city employees. And I wanted to to tell you that. So, that's all I have for tonight. Okay, I have made a mistake. I've just realized <laughs> I need to back up. Uh, <laughs> I'm working off of two agendas. <laughs> oh, number eleven. Um, the new agenda did not have item eleven on it item 11 being on the old agenda under ordinances that this was item 11 on the old agenda was the ordinance amending the city's alcohol beverage ordinance remember we talked about that um, with the pending contract or pretending project um, and uh, going in across from the conference center the liquor store that would go in across from the conference uh, remember that yes. okay um, Mayor, I'll just give we, you we've, we've, we've had a lot of discussion. Um, what is, should this be on the agenda? Should it not be on the agenda? So um, it had come off the new agenda, but I had asked that it stay on the new agenda, our new agenda, and it didn't. Anyway, long story short, we need to talk about the alcohol ordinance, amending the alcohol ordinance, and what you gentlemen would like to do uh, going forward. So, Rob, now I'll turn it over to you to, to share our conversation. Okay. It, uh, as you all might recall, what we had a conversation um, in our last meeting was uh, the distance requirement between a package store and a college campus. And the state law defines a college campus uh, basically where you, know, you have buildings and schools or any grounds of the college campus. So looking at it, you know, as I see literally, you know, college grounds is a college campus under state law. One of the things we were looking at was the Athens Ordinance, which basically kind of defined a college campus as a place where there are buildings where classes are commonly taught. Uh, so I sent out an email to the GMA listserv attorneys and said, listen, this is the issue I've got. Um, I see, you know, this is the state law, this is what Athens did. And can the city redefine a college campus something different than what state law does. Uh, I just really, in the last 10 minutes, I got a response from one of the lawyers up in Gainesville that basically says that generally state law is going to set your floor. You know, you can make it, uh, you know, stricter, but you cannot make it less restrictive. So he was of the opinion that, well, maybe, you know, Athens ordinance didn't really change the definition. It just added in there that it's where buildings are commonly taught. So when you look, if you go on Q Public and you look at the UGA ca campus, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's 1,900 acres. And so you're going to, you know, you have educational buildings on the grounds. So it's my opinion that because you have buildings teaching classes and they're on the college grounds which is would be the campus then i think that you know the property right across 41 is going to be a college campus uh, there's not been anything that i know of that anybody's <coughs> refined that definition or changed that definition but according to this attorney in Gainesville, there had been attempts in the past to try to broaden the language, and the state's gotten stricter as far as coming down on, you know, on what a college campus is. So I didn't want us to be in a situation where you know, we uh, do something that may allow the, the package store to be there, and then later on you know, the state come back and say, wait a minute, that property's too close to a college campus. That being said, 
you can change the distance. And, uh, and that is allowed under state law. So you've got that authority. I mean, it doesn't say how, you know, could you make it 10 feet, 100 feet, 1,000 feet? I don't see any restriction about what you can do. The measurement for the purposes of a business to a college campus is measured from the front door of the building to the nearest property line. So those are the distances you'll be looking at when you try to figure out what you all want to do. Roughly, just looking at Q Public and putting a ruler on it, if you looked at the front door being close to the middle of the property, you're probably looking about 420 feet, approximately. So, now, one thing that I have not done and what we always have to be concerned about is when we look at things like this, we want to make sure we don't have any unintended consequences uh, if you decide that you want to you know, narrow that distance requirement. One of the things you could look at, naturally, is what is the surrounding properties of the college campus? Naturally, you're only going to be able to have a package store in general business. So if it's residential property all around the campus, then you're not going to that have that. That kind of takes care of anyway. itself, yeah. So that's, uh, you know, so I, you know, honestly, you know, we, as a matter of fact, we have a call tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking with the uh, Athens uh, city attorney tomorrow morning about their ordinance. So I guess what I would recommend at this point is uh, maybe drill down on it just a little bit more. Let's take a look at what the zoning is around UGA. See if you know we're you know there would be any unintended consequences. I'll you know talk with the city attorney up in Athens who did actually have a different definition and see what their thoughts were. My recollection is up in Athens that we're going to do some apartment uh, housing or something like that. It's okay. We want to have a. We don't want to include that. That's those aren't buildings that are teaching you know classes. So that would be my recommendation. We could you know if if we can develop something between now and the next meeting that you all want to take a look at with a draft of a proposed um, amendment to our alcohol ordinance, we can present that and you all can discuss it. And if you'd like to have a special call meeting, at that point we could we could have a special call meeting and go ahead and adopt that amendment if that's what y'all want to do. We can get that stuff to you early enough you can look at it and then, you know, have a time to digest it and see what y'all want to do. I think we need to have a discussion. Okay. So we're talking about the property on I-75 that used to be uh, the old Howard Johnson. Howard Johnson. Howard Johnson. Howard Johnson. It's now nothing. Except trucks would park there and it's right. just look but, terrible. That's true. But I'd like to say literally right across the street, that starts UGA property. Okay. But to the I guess we're talking about the conference center. Is that the closest right. is that the closest building? Or are you talking are you talking about UGA camp? I mean which front door if it's not the, the conference center, what, what front door are you talking about? Bounds property line, property line. Are those the front door or something? From for, for a the distance requirement for a for the college campus is from the front door to the nearest property line. Front door of the business. Front door of the business, the package store, to the nearest property, property line of the college campus. College, college campus. campus. And the thing is, like I said, when you look at the, uh, if you look at Q Public and you click on that property, I mean, it just shows it all. It's not divided up in any individual tracks. It's just one big tract of land. So when then the state law talks about college grounds, I mean, it so says included but not limited to, and I mean it's just broad. And so it's 400. You said it's 430 feet, so roughly. 400, roughly 430 yeah. feet. Give yeah. Or if you were to draw, if you were to just kind of put the, your your measurement on the center lot, the center of that old Howard Johnson property, and then measure it to the property line of UGA, it's about 420 feet. Okay. If the front door is in the middle of the property. We, we have got to do something to not drag all this stuff out. I think yeah. it's 50 because the, our rules are in feet, right? 200 feet, right? 
our rules now are 200 feet. I think it's yards. 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 But we would have to come back to 50 yards or 50 yards? 50 yards. Probably 50 feet. So that would be like how many football fields. But, but you can restrict it within a college. Can you restrict it, say, that within a college campus, not overall? You know, 50 yards or whatever. I mean, I, I, I guess my mind, whatever we need to decide, we need to decide it quickly. We have an opportunity. You know, we, we won't pack a store that they would pass that hurdle. We got a place that they want it. It's a place that's excellent. It's a place that will take care of an eyesore that's out there. And we just can't dilly dally around with this and that. And I mean, before long, they, they look up and say, well, let's go somewhere else. Let's go build a boat. Okay, and then we got this eyesore there. Because I get calls about it all the time. And so it's an opportunity we just don't need to let pass. So I don't, I like, don't disagree. You know, two weeks, let's get something done. If we have to have a special call meeting or, or something, but let them build the darn thing there. I mean, good God, it's not close enough from any instruction play. I mean, anyway. Okay, so our workshop will be in about two weeks. Right. Crystal, is, the, is that project in any kind of jeopardy if we don't make a decision for two weeks. The 18th, 18th of, of July. July. Our next meeting, I believe, is the 11th. So she would appreciate, you know, sure. um, the possibly um, like next Thursday, maybe is kind of what I looked at. Maybe you wait till the week of the 4th, that kind of gets into the holiday season, maybe. You know, I don't know what y'all's plans mm -hmm. are. But, um, and just have a special called meeting to address that. Let's look for a way to say yes, please. I'll be glad. I will be glad to do that, Jack. And so, what I what I intend on doing is, if there's any anything I can do with the definition of a college campus, I'll deal with that. I don't think there's going to be. So then, probably the only thing that I'll be able to do is limit the distance to you know what you know what all would make it work. And then I will also look, and with Crystal's help, look at the zoning around the campus to see if there's if there's going to be any outliers out there that might cause us a problem. Thank you. And I'll I'll have something prepared uh, as a draft ordinance to amend it. Do we know any other or any other locations been made public yet of, of where the other probably three not, would be? Probably not public. Okay. Are there in in not disclosing any specific locations. Are there any challenges with any of the locations that you've heard about other than this one? Yes, that's all. Okay. I just want, while we're fixing something, let's right. fix all of it. So I just want I'll, to say. I'll get something put together. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is everybody good with that to, mm -hmm. to do that? Yes. Okay. All right. So do we need to, um, do we need a motion for a date specific meeting that we're, because we did not take item 11 technically off of the old agenda when we approved the new agenda. So well, I did. Agenda is not the, the yeah, but we didn't talk about that when we, when you explained the agenda, well, when I, we I, didn't I, talk about item 11. So, uh, I, I think we're okay. Hmm? As far as, you know, adding it back to the agenda or what? I don't, I I don't know. I just want to make sure that we don't let this slide off the plate. Um, and it that we're not, okay. We could always table it for two weeks. Okay, all right. So I don't need to take any action, I guess. No, okay. No, we, okay. Well, we have a meeting next week is what we're Yeah, doing. so. I would think, you know, we'll be at GMA on maybe um, Thursday. Yeah, end of yes. the week. Yes. yes, that would be good. Okay, yes. all right. Okay, is everybody good with that? Okay, yeah. all right, we'll make sure everybody's on the same page. All right, so we've had our city manager report, um, mayor and council comments, and then that will be, the end of the meetings. Anybody would anybody like to go first or um, I'll jump in first. Okay, thank you, Josh. I just wanted to say I appreciate ESG for going out and handling the situation in, in my district as well as code enforcement. I called Crystal, she got Sparky and uh, Dalton right on that and they handled that issue for us. So thank you both the code enforcement and ESG. And lastly, I just am looking so forward to Savannah and seeing you getting sworn as president of the GMA. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm looking forward to it too. 
Can we get the next question? Oh, sure. Uh, I just want to speak on um, the subject of uh, the homeless and the elderly uh, with the heat that we're having. I just feel like everybody trying to pay attention to uh, their surroundings and there are some elderly that may live in homes without air condition to uh, do a wellness check and um, just pay attention and uh, if there's an opportunity to help someone that may need water, um, please do so. And um, again, let's check on our elderly that doesn't have air condition, if you know of them. So uh, please pay attention and uh, you know, let's um, be a good citizen. Good advice. There you go. Thank you. Good deal. Jack? Um, um, picking up on what Josh said with Jeff and ESG, I mean, it, it was hot out there this afternoon. We, we met out there and, and that sun under degree heat and Jeff's always the, he willing to go where to meet and you can teach with us and this, these guys just don't sit in an office. They're out doing it. Um, the other thing, Pete, make, make note of what the 20th Street at 41. I know all y'all drive there. Well, you know, you're sitting there headed west and you got three lanes headed west and one little lane that's headed east, which makes no sense whatsoever. And the other side, if you can head it east, you have to move to the right, and then it makes you move to the left. And that's a four-lane road. Can we please just turn it into, let's have a four-lane road. The left lane on one side can be the left turn lane. That's fine. And you can go either way. But it's, it's the screwiest thing. When people are trying to turn in that single lane, it's dangerous. They are trying to send you just into that lane, and, and I don't understand why you have a four-lane road that it just makes no sense. So can we look at that and see, let's just turn it into a, a regular four-lane road like normal. It's like normal? It's just, not a, it's just not a normal intersection there. So if you look at that, I'd appreciate it. All right. Pete was making notes. I saw him. Uh, MJ? I uh, just want to say pretty much the same thank you Jeff and calling on everybody Crystal Pete all the time everybody around do something always and they always jump right over and then try to handle it for the best for our citizens and people that's come to do Chipton as well uh, and uh, also want to thank uh, the city for handling Juneteenth the way we did and I think everybody was excited and uh, thrilled with uh, what we did and accepted for Juneteenth and the parade and all that good stuff. So uh, it's just it's a good feeling to see people coming together and doing great things for a great uh, you know memory. So. Exactly. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, I'll wrap things up. I uh, just want to remind everybody about July the first. Uh, Colonel Puckett being in town. Colonel Ralph Puckett um, that morning at eleven o'clock at First Methodist Church on Twelfth Street. Um, the committee met this morning, and it is going to be a very, very special day and a, and a true honor to have him uh, have him in Tifton uh, with his family and um, all of the, the military um, entourage that will be supporting and, and coming with him. So it's going to be a really special day. So please make plans to be at that on the 11th. Uh, we'll be presenting him. Uh, we approved that in the consent agenda. We'll be... Um, doing an honorary street naming for him and then the key to the city and a resolution. And then uh, that evening, we'll have Rock the Block right out here in front of City Hall. It's gonna be hot as blue blazes, but we'll have a good time and fireworks afterwards. So just share with your friends and neighbors, come out and have fun, we'll have birthday cake because it is part of our 150th celebration. And we'll be honoring and recognizing our military, the military men and women of this community who have, have lived in Tifton or maybe grew up here and uh, Tiftonites who have served uh, served their country uh, so well. And then I uh, want to remind you on July the 21st that we'll have the Braves World Series trophy coming into town. And so Emily's working on that. Um, we're also hoping to recognize many of our sports heroes and sports officials. Uh, from Tifton as part of the 150th. So continuing to celebrate all year long, many good things going on in the community. Uh, like Lester said, stay cool and, and check on your friends and family and your pets. Uh, make sure your pets are, are have shelter and water. And um, unless there's any other business to come before, oh, 
uh, there is other business. And we will need a, a very short executive session. Oh, uh, great. Them. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. So, uh, as we wrap up, well, there's, there's always a downer. <laughs> there's always a Debbie Downer. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, then, then in that case, I will need a motion to, uh, to go into executive session. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. We'll take about a, all in favor? Okay. Uh, we'll take about a two minute break and then uh, 